Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me for this spoiler-free review of Escaflone, a mid-90s anime TV series created by Shoji Kawamori, who you may know from Macross, Eureka 7, and many other series, and by Studio Sunrise, which you may know from Gundam. So Escaflone is set in a fantasy world with giant robots, though technically they're giant suits of armor that are just piloted by somebody inside. To make it even more complicated, there's a strong romantic storyline. The main character is a teen girl, um, and so it's sort of a half shonen, half shoujo series. The protagonist, Hitomi, is a Japanese high school girl who's transported to this magical fantasy land of giant robots or giant suits of armor, and that's under attack by a mysterious enemy. Um, she quickly gets entangled with a prince and a cat girl, and you can tell where this is going. Now, Sunrise had a large animation budget for this by TV standards. Action sequences in particular have a lot of animation frames, although the dialogue scenes can feel a little lackluster. Facial expressions can be expressive, but mostly stick to standard expressions of surprise or wonder or things like that. Uh, and I don't recall any anime visual cliches of you know, sweat drops, stuff like that. Now the character designs are rather unusual and they may take a little getting used to. They feel rather shoujo actually, you know, very large eyes even by anime standards. So be aware of that. Now the animation style is this odd mix between um, the stylized movement and realism. Meaning that uh, often in the, in the action sequences, characters will manage these kind of superhuman movements, but otherwise they act very realistically and they move in a, a very like, three-dimensional way where they, they feel like they're very much part of their physical world. Now the plot moves very quickly, pushing its characters uh, into political intrigue and big battles and the story ramps up quite, quite fast. And the editing always feels like it's keeping pace with that very, very nicely. In action sequences it can be very rapid paced, during slower sequences, it's slower. More importantly, the editing does not feel overly arty. Um, it does what it needs to to tell the story. Now, because of the shoujo aspect of Escaflone, the characters are all important. And Escaflone does have a wide cast of characters, from pretty boys to child rulers to curvy female assassins. Now, without getting into spoilers, the main character is attracted to two guys, and her feelings teeter between the two. And this seems to be a major bone of contention among fans or potential fans of the show. Um, people who find that interesting get into the show. People who don't tend to fall away. They, they tend to get frustrated by that pretty easily. Now, that said, the relationships between the characters do evolve significantly over time. So don't feel like they're going to be stuck forever. Now, Escaflone is set in a pretty standard medieval fantasy world with the addition of giant suits of armor. There are a few twists like doppelgangers and cat girls and an Arabian flair to some of the clothing, um, but otherwise it's pretty standard D&D style fantasy. I should point out that this is Yoko Kano's first solo composer role. She composed the music for this. Um, she had previously co-composed Aquarion, I believe, with her husband at the time. Now, Escaflone's music is pretty big and operatic, with lots of echoing choirs and stirring strings. This perfectly matches the nature of the show. It's melodramatic, it's boy meets girl meets boy, it's big epic um, battles on the battlefield with giant robots. Uh, it, it just really, really works for the show. So those are the basics of Escaflone, a kind of shoujo fantasy, medieval fantasy, romance fantasy, series from the mid-90s. Um, again, it's slightly uh, out of phase with typical anime shows, and I think that's a lot of what makes it interesting and fun.